In this video, we're going to understand why there has been a sudden increase in missile tests from North Korea. Actually, if you see in 2011, when Kim Jong-un took over as the new leader of North Korea, we can see that during his reign, North Korea has conducted numerous missile and nuclear tests. In fact, this year alone, North Korea has test-fired more than 30 missiles, which includes short, medium and long-range ballistic missiles. In fact, this year in September, North Korea has officially declared itself as a nuclear weapon state. And they have also clearly stated that they will never abandon their nuclear weapons because they need it to counter the United States. That means it is very clear that the reason behind North Korea's nuclear ambition is United States of America. In fact, there are reports which say that North Korea has plans of conducting more nuclear tests. That also clearly means that North Korea not only wants to have nuclear weapons, but they also want to keep upgrading their nuclear technology so that they can have an edge over others. Now, if you look at the missiles that North Korea has been testing, they include cruise missiles, hypersonic missiles, and wide range of ballistic missiles. In fact, a couple of days back, on October 3rd, North Korea had conducted their longest range missile test that flew over Japan and landed in the Pacific Ocean. The last time anything like this happened was in 2017. The name of that missile was Wasong-12. It is North Korea's medium-range ballistic missile which has a range of 4,500 kilometers that is far enough to hit the US island of Guam from North Korea. This missile traveled at a speed of 17 Mach, which means that the missile traveled 17 times the speed of sound. And needless to say, Japan was terrified. And as usual, North Korea, Japan, United States and many other members of the United Nations Security Council condemned North Korea's missile launch, even India was part of it. However, you must realize that since 2006, UN Security Council has passed nearly a dozen resolutions towards sanctioning North Korea for developing nuclear weapons. Because that's the only thing United Nations or the international community can do. Economic sanctions have always been the response to any country's unwanted behavior. And as you know, United Nations consist of countries that are much inclined towards United States' thought process. And take any country in this world which has sanctions, like Russia, Iran, North Korea, they all have problem with one and only one country, and that is the United States of America. So from 2006, the international community has relied on sanctions to punish and condemn North Korea. Here is a website on UN Security Council resolution against North Korea. You can read all the resolutions. I think there are about six resolutions that have been passed against North Korea. In fact, this year in June 2022, United Nations was supposed to put another resolution on North Korea. But guess who came for rescue? It was China and Russia who defended North Korea and vetoed on any new sanction against North Korea. See, one thing that you have to understand is North Korea very much listens to China. China and Russia, both the countries, see UN sanctions as a Western tool for weaponizing the global economy, which, if you see, is absolutely true. Sanction is basically a penalty that is imposed to gain control over a country's behavior. In today's time, economic sanction is the only tool the Western countries uses to isolate any country in making them behave according to their interests. So Asian countries are very much aware of this. In fact, India is also aware of Western sanctions because even India has faced minor sanctions every now and then. Anyhow, so China and Russia, they are very much aware of the intention behind UN sanctions. It is a Western tool for weaponizing the global economy. And this year, both the countries, that is China and Russia, have made it very clear that they are not interested in putting further sanctions against North Korea. And by the way, even the United States, as well as its allies like South Korea and Japan, they are aware of the fact that economic sanctions are not turning out to be effective on North Korea. Because 90% of North Korea's trade is with China, and they both share border with each other. So you can say that a multilateral institutions, that is the joint effort of United States, South Korea and Japanese government, has become less effective against the cooperation of Russia, China and North Korea. If you see this group that is Russia, China and North Korea, they are on the front foot. They don't really care about US sanctions or any other UN sanctions. Their objectives are very clear and straightforward. And they also know that the United States is on the other side of the Pacific Ocean. And currently they also have to deal with many problems. They are currently engaged in Russia-Ukraine war and with European energy crisis and American domestic inflation. So right now the immediate two countries, that is South Korea and Japan, they are nothing without the support of United States. Plus sanctions are also not turning out to be effective. That is the reason United States, South Korea and Japan, they are slowly shifting towards a new strategy, which is less economic and more military. 
Together, these three countries are opting for a stronger defense posture that also includes joint military exercises. That is why you must have seen in the month of August, United States and South Korea conducted their largest military drills. And if you see China, North Korea and Russia, they don't have to do all these kind of muscle flexing military drills. All they have to do is fire a missile once in a while just to scare the shit out of countries in this region. And then automatically you see that United States, South Korea and even Japan, they will start conducting military drills, which works both as a preparation and as a response. But then if you see, even the former US President Donald Trump has said, these kind of joint military drills turn out to be very expensive and provocative. Because money is also an important factor, right? This is the same thing that happens in the Indian subcontinent. Why do you think despite having economic crisis in Pakistan, they still provoke India every now and then by doing some notorious act at the western border or by sending infiltrates for doing jihad? That is because Pakistan is aware of the fact that all these small frequent infiltrations and ceasefire violation is going to ultimately increase India's defense expenditure. That is also the exact reason behind recent United States F-16 package to Pakistan. Anyhow, so conducting these kind of joint military drills is also turning out to be expensive for United States and also for its allies in this region. Now let's have a look at the missiles that North Korea have. As you can see, North Korea's intercontinental ballistic missile program has also reached a new paradigm wherein they have a missile named Wasong-17 that can cover a distance of more than 15,000 kilometers. And this is not North Korea's claim. These claims are made by US and Japan. In fact, there is a whole set of missiles under the name Wasong. By looking at their range, these are easily capable of reaching New York. And furthermore, these missiles are capable of carrying three or four warheads. Otherwise, these kind of missiles that other countries own, the usual payload for these missiles are one warhead. Now, I want you to think about it. With a missile that has a three or more warhead attached to their ICBMs, it's going to be very hard for any country to defend itself. And if you look at the nuclear weapons of North Korea, they are on another level. The last time North Korea tested its nuclear bomb was in 2017. It is said that North Korea has tested their nuclear bomb that weighs anywhere between 100 to 300 kilotons. Just to give you a little perspective, a 100 kiloton bomb is six times more powerful than the one United States dropped on Hiroshima in 1945. And if you remember, what United States dropped on Hiroshima was an atom bomb. But this one that North Korea tested is a hydrogen bomb. Without giving you much technical details, just understand that a hydrogen bomb is much stronger than an atom bomb. The only difference is of fission and fusion. Anyways, so North Korea has tested a hydrogen bomb. And now it is also said that North Korea is going to test a miniature version of a hydrogen bomb that can be fitted on wide range of missiles. Do you realize how dangerous that can turn out to be? Since we are not aware of it, there are many places in this world where every day small small missiles and rockets are being fired. And the explosives on these small missiles and rockets have a smaller range of destruction. They are very much contained. Now just imagine if you can develop a possibility of putting a nuclear bomb on a small missile or rocket that is being casually and randomly fired every single day in many places in the world. Just imagine the consequences. Now it is very clear that North Korea is not going to stop. They will keep doing more and more advanced nuclear tests. On top of it, UN resolution and sanctions doesn't work on North Korea. So Russia, China and North Korea, they are planning the offensive game because they are sick and tired of the United States and other Western countries. And now recently, as you know, the West has also destroyed Russian Nord Stream gas pipelines. And surprisingly, Sweden is doing the investigation. They have also blocked the area. Even Russia has requested to be part of this investigation, but as usual, they have been denied. Otherwise, how will the West frame Russia? And by the way, Sweden is the same country that also wishes to join NATO and have forwarded their application. So there is no doubt even Russia is going to do something. And if you have noticed, Russia is never vocal about such things. When they have to do it, they will do it. And who knows the aggression from this incident can also be seen as a support in some or the other form towards North Korea. But anyhow, the fact of the matter is that the joint effort of United States, South Korea and Japanese government has become less effective against the cooperation of Russia, China and North Korea. So let's see how things will fold out. I hope you found this video informative and thank you for watching it.